ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وان محمدا عبده ورسوله unquestionably the perfect praise belongs to allah we praise him we seek his aid we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds whosoever allah guides will never be led astray and whosoever allah leaves astray no one can guide i bear witness that there is no god but allah the one having no partners and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and his messenger musa alaihi salam gave this dua and i feel that i am in needing of this dua rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa aqlatu uqlatami lisani yafqahu qawli oh my lord expand my chest make my task easy remove the impediment from my speech so they may understand what i say allah commands us in the quran kul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mahmati lillahi rabbil alamin la sharika lahu wa batalika umirtu wa anna awalul muslimin it means say surely my sacrifice my worship my life and my death are all for allah lord of all systems of knowledge he has no partners and with that i am commanded and i am the first to be muslim we thank allah for this day of juma we thank allah for waking us for the best day of the week We thank Allah for another opportunity another breath to show our gratitude to him for making us muslim it is indeed a mercy and a blessing from Allah al-muhaimin the guardian the preserver of safety the overseeing protector Allah is al-muhaimin meaning the one who ensures well-being and protection over his creation he is also ever watchful nothing can be hidden from him and he is the knower of all the secrets that we conceal as a name and attribute of allah al muhaimin is only mentioned in the quran one time when allah says hu wallahu ladhi la illaha malu mal إلها مليك السلام المكمن المحيمن العزيز in surah 59 when allah is mentioning or listing his attributes but al muhaimin is only mentioned one time but we pray and we strive so that perhaps others are guided to this mercy and this blessing called al islam allah says in the quran or it is translated we have revealed to you this book with the truth al haq as a confirmation musaddiqan of previous scriptures and a supreme authority over them muhaimin so judge hikum between them by what allah has revealed and do not follow their desires over the truth that has come to you to each of you he has ordered a code of law and a way of life the quran is a muhaimin what does that what does that mean it comes from the word hayman it means to watch over to oversee to expand the wings like a hen over his chicken or when someone says let me get underneath my wing for me It also means control. Quality control. It means to be a witness to. Offer security and peace. It also means protect. And it also means to determine what is true. In the Quranic dictionary, 
It means guardian to watch and determine what is true and what is false witness. Al Kitab means people of the book. What book, you may ask? Allah says, they say, the Jews say, Christians have nothing, and the Christians say the Jews have nothing, although they both recite the same scripture. The Bible is the book that Allah as a wajil is referring to. Allah is saying, how can you both have nothing when you are sharing the same book? Why are you in dispute? Allah says he has sent down upon you the book in truth, confirming what was before it. And he revealed the Torah and the gospel. Allah can again confirms that the Torah and the gospel Singular, the gospel, not gospels. Is it the Bible that Allah is confirming? Or the Torah and the gospel in the Bible? I know some Muslims have a misconception about this. That the Bible was once true and people have changed it. And Allah says, and we sent following in their footsteps Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming that which came before him in the Torah, and we gave him the gospel, in which was guidance and a light, and confirming that which preceded it of the Torah as a guidance and instruction for the righteous. So Allah confirmed the Torah with his messenger and prophet, Jesus or Isa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the gospel singular, not the four gospels. By the way, none of those people were near Jesus when he was delivering Allah's message. Allah repeats that he confirmed the Torah with Jesus or Isa alayhi salam and the gospel. Is that the Bible that Allah is talking about? All the Torah and the gospel in the Bible. Interestingly enough, Muslims say, when they discuss the Bible, in your Bible, in your scripture, in your gospels. I have written a book where it says the Jewish Torah. We say this to suggest that we don't give those books the same authority that Jews and Christians give the books. Well, guess who else during their lifetime did the same? Jesus, according to the Bible, he says, quoting the Bible, it has been said by men of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you, turn the other cheek. He says, it has been said by men of old time. If someone strikes your cheek, give them the, if someone, he says, it's been said by men of old time, you can divorce your wife, but I say unto you, thus and so. He does this over and over and over again. He keeps saying, it has been said by men of old time, thus and so. Why does he say men of old time instead of saying the Torah of Moses Alayhi salam says this. In the Bible, he's also recorded as saying, In your law, it says, Ye are gods. Why didn't he say, In my law, in our law, in Moses' law? He also says, In their law. He is saying this to put distance between what he is teaching and what they possess that they are calling the Torah. Like we say, when we speak to non-Muslims about their holidays or their holy books, he also said, it has been said by men of old time. Do you know why that is? Because most people 
up until recent history were illiterate. They learned by oral tradition. There was no internet, no textbooks, no typewriters even, no notebook paper, no printers, no copiers. Everything had to be written by hand, every book, everything. That took too much time and effort. So people did not learn how to read and write. So keep that in mind when you think about the Torah and the gospel. Allah says, indeed, Allah has purchased from the believers their lives and their properties in exchange for, for that they will have paradise. They will fight in the cause of Allah, so they will kill and are killed. It is a true promise binding upon him in the Torah and the gospel and the Quran. Allah here says that paradise is guaranteed for the martyr and for those who fight in the cause of Allah. And Allah says he has established this in the Torah, in the gospel and in the Quran. I want you to, for a moment, imagine the audacity of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying this. How did he know that this is in the Torah of Moses, alaihi salam, or in the Injil or the Gospel singular of Jesus or Isa, alaihi salam? At the time of the Prophet, the Bible was not translated into Arabic. It was translated into Arabic three hundred years after he returned to Allah. And almost everyone in Arabia was illiterate. They could not read nor write Arabic, let alone Hebrew, Koine Greek, and Aramaic. And almost no one on earth today knows Hebrew, Koine Greek, and Aramaic, only biblical scholars. Over 95% of the Arabs could not read nor write. And most people before them, again, could not read or write. And most Muslims believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was illiterate. That he could not read or write. There are other Muslims who say he could. And that's a good topic for our Talim. The dispute comes from the word ummi. Ummi means unlettered. It could mean an Arab or non-Jew. It could mean a Gentile. It also means those who have not received scripture of their own. The people of Arabia were Ummi, but their memorization was top-notch. When Jabril says Ikra, what does he mean? Read or recite? Clearly he means recite. The Quran is not a book. The Quran is the recitation. It is the audible words given to our prophet to recite. And he recited it to different people in different situations and different circumstances. That's what the Quran is. It is not the book. The book contains the words. The words recited is what the Quran is. Now most of the people in the time of Moses, of Jesus, and Muhammad were illiterate. And we know how revelation was received in different situations and different circumstances. Allah as a wajel sends Jibril to give revelation to his messengers. And this is what happened with Musa or Moses and the Torah. But Moses had different, slightly different circumstances. Moses on Mount Sinai was given a tablet containing the laws and all their explanations. And Jesus and his gospel was exactly how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received revelation. The Bible says Jesus went to a certain town preaching the gospel singular. Just like our prophet going to Medina teaching the Quran. He wasn't holding a Quran under his, under his arm. Jesus went to another place preaching the gospel. 
He didn't have a Bible under his arm. He didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John under his arm opening it and reading it to the people. Those are biographies of Jesus or Isa alayhi salam and not gospel, the gospel given to him by Allah. The Jewish Torah, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible are not the Torah. They never were. They are five history books about the start of humanity and its line to the children of Israel. It is not the revelation given to Musa or Moses, alayhi salam. It never was. That book says Moses died and no one has come up to the children of Israel like him till this day. He definitely did not write those books. Someone else wrote them about him long after he returned to Allah. The same is true of the four books of the Bible that they call the Gospels. They are not what Allah as a wajal gave Jesus. Jesus never met Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or whoever those authors are. So Muslims, we should not say the Bible was the word of Allah and it was changed. It was not. It was the word of human beings and people attributed them to Moses alayhi salam and Jesus alayhi salam and to Allah as a wajib. And Allah tells us, beware, woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say it is from Allah. Let's stop now. And ask Allah for forgiveness.